So right now you're watching me take raw JSON that lives at this URL, and then just using this prompt that's on the screen right now, you can pause it if you want to, but I'm just saying, fetch that data, loop through it, set up CSS for a two column grid, and there you can see it's giving me the result. Now, what in the world's going on here? Well, first of all, thank you to Codium for sponsoring this video. In this video, we're going to see how you can use Codium to add sort of AI autocomplete or AI chat features to your text editor. Hello everyone. If you're anything like me, you do not use GitHub Copilot because it costs money. And also, I really don't like the fact that it was a free beta and then all of a sudden, after everyone was used to it and hooked on it, then they started charging money. So if I don't use GitHub Copilot, then how am I getting these sort of auto completions in my VS Code editor? Well, I'm using something called Codium. Codium is free, and not just free as in a free trial or free because it's in a limited beta. It's always going to have a free option available. I mean, you can search their official homepage. Uh, you know, they're marketing it as a free tool. Here they even say free forever. They also have a blog post about how they're going to maintain that free model or how they're going to survive or make money. Uh, essentially, they're going to have an enterprise uh, plan for teams, you know, corporations instead of individuals. And also, they explain that they don't uh, harvest or like sell or profit off your code. Mainly, they just use your input to sort of A B test code. Like when it auto suggests something, are you accepting it or declining or redoing it? Uh, they're really just using your input as like, is this good or bad code and improving the model that way. As an individual, it's hard to beat that price of free forever. Now, if we go to check out the VS Code extension area, you can see the Codium extension has over a million installs. Uh, so I think it's safe to say that it's very useful. A lot of developers are really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying it. So now let me show you sort of what you can do with Codium. I'm just going to start with a completely empty folder. So I have this folder on my desktop, my project, and let's just create like a completely empty HTML file, uh, CSS file, and JavaScript file. Before I show you all of Codium's features, let's just start typing or coding like you normally would. So like in my HTML file, I would you know, use a VS Code snippet, uh, but then I would try to attach my CSS file. And you can see it already knows exactly what I would want. You can just hit tab, cool. And then down before the closing body, I'd probably want my script. You can hit tab, cool. Uh, so then I could say like, you know, welcome to my page. And then this isn't Codium, this is just VS Code, but like what if I wanted a little bit of lorem ipsum, hit tab. Again, that's just a VS Code or Emmet tab trigger. And then let's imagine I wanted a button or link that you could click on. So you could have a button and let's say like learn more. Now if we save that and go write some CSS for that, so like button, it's going to give me background blue and then all these other things that would probably look like a button. Let's see what that looks like if we look at a preview. Cool. Um, so then you could fix that up a little bit, right? You could say like border radius. 10 pixels, maybe change the exact shade of blue that you want. Uh, but what I want to show you now is uh, how smart this is in terms of like hover effects and like making really good design decisions. So like if I said uh, the button hover rule, check this out. Well, that's not good. That's suggesting, what is that, black or white? I think that's black. Yeah, so clearly that's not what we want, but watch how quickly it learns. So like if I choose, um, like this blue, but just make it slightly darker for the hover. So let's make it like that, right? So now it knows that, okay, for buttons, I want a slightly darker color. Check this out. If I have like a secondary button, so like, uh, and give it a class of like a secondary button, say about us. And if I write a rule for that, right? So I say secondary button. And then let's say I make this button orange. Okay, and now if I write the hover rule for that, it knows to choose a darker orange, like the same percentage darker. So th when I saw this, I was very impressed. This tells me that it's not just um, looking up like other people's snippets, it's actually very contextually aware of your files. And we're gonna see a little bit later in this video, it's also aware of the context between your different files. like. Your CSS is aware of your HTML. Your HTML is aware of your JavaScript and your CSS and vice versa. I'm really impressed by this. Let me give you an example. So like, let's say below this, we wanted to have uh, like a two column split. So maybe below the button, let me hide this preview really quick. Let's have like a div called like uh, our features, or let's actually call it like our grid. I think this will suggest what we want a little bit clearer. And then we'll have like a feature card. 
And then, uh, you know, inside there, imagine you have like a heading and then a bit of paragraph text. Whoops, you can see it didn't automatically close out the P. That's okay. Now imagine you would have two of these and you want like a two column split. So if you save that and then you go into your CSS, uh, if I say like, our, you can see it was already suggesting our grid and then it uses grid for a two column layout. So if I go back to the preview, I mean, awesome. Now what's really cool is it saw that there was two, or if you had like an even number, it would do a, like if you had four divs, it would probably also do a two column grid. But if you have three, it's smart enough. Like if we delete this and you go back into your HTML and let's say this time we have three feature cards nested inside that and you save that and go back over here and you say, okay, write the thing, the rule, the thing, <laughs> uh, the selector for our grid. Whoops, it's still wanting a two column grid. Maybe you have to change the name, like instead of our grid, if we say like our features, then it'll pick up on the new. Like, so if I say our features, well, no. This is the beauty of recording things live and have it, instead of having it be perfectly scripted, it's not, you have to take my word for it. Sometimes it's hit or miss. The other day I was trying this and it perfectly gave me uh, grid template columns of like one FR, one FR, one FR, but. I mean, this is the same thing using Flexbox. All I was trying to show you is that it is aware, like your HTML and CSS are aware of each other, which I think is pretty cool. At this point, let's change gears. Let's have some fun. Let's work with JavaScript. Down here, let's have a text input form field. And uh, every time you change its value, like as you're typing into it, let's evaluate it. Um, so if you type in a string that ends in a lot, like barks a lot or meows a lot or woofs a lot, Let's have the input turn green as in that's good. If it ends in anything other than a lot, let's have it turn red as if that's bad. Um, so let's just work through how you would do that. I would just go into my HTML, let's have an input. Uh, let's give it a class of uh, pet name. Okay, and first let's get the styling set up. So like I would go into my style sheet and you can literally, so instead of just um, auto completion, you can actually give it a command. Now you could write like a CSS inline comment to generate some CSS, uh, but if you press control or command I, it brings up this command area. So I could say like, write a rule for dot uh, pet name that is an elegant form field input. And then you could click this button or if you just press control or command enter, and then uh, you can just accept that code. I think it's, what is it? Alt and A. Uh, so, you know, maybe I don't love that, but that looks better than the default. I'll, I'll roll with it for now. Um, so let's save that. And now let's go set up the JavaScript. Actually really quick, let's set up the alternate classes that turn it green or red, depending on if it's good or bad, right? So let's have like a good class. Uh, wow, it already guessed the color. That's pretty interesting. And then like if I had a bad class, wow. Uh, if you went into your scripts, uh, now I would probably just write a comment. So in JavaScript, like an inline comment, say uh, watch the dot pet name input for changes. And if its value ends in dot a lot or quotes a lot, uh, give the element a class of good, lowercase good. Uh, otherwise, give it a class of bad. Uh, and then just at the end of that line, if you press enter, and then maybe do I need to press enter again? Hmm. Well, this again, the beauty of recording live. Uh, what if I made that like a multiple line comment? I wonder if that would help it out. No? Oh well. Uh, a lot of times inline comments like this would work beautifully. Let me try the command mode, right? So uh, just control or command I and then just paste in my instructions. Let's give that a go. Let's see what that gets us. Uh, before I even review the code, let me just test it. Okay, so it's red, but if I type in uh, barks a lot. Cool, I mean, you can see it turns green as soon as it's what we were looking for. You know, if I say like meows, and then as soon as I put in the T, it turns green. Cool, so that was an example of using command or control I for the command mode. In another minute or two, I wanna show you how I really like to use that command I feature. But before we get to that, I do wanna let you know that uh, a lot of times you don't need to use that for JavaScript. And I, I'm just trying to let you know that a lot of times I've been very happy with the autocomplete behavior. Like for example, if we were imagining that this was a React component, so like if I said import, you know, like uh, React use state from uh, React, 
And then imagine down here I had a, like a component. What's cool is uh, like if you say const, yeah, well, it just read my mind. So like when you're doing boilerplate things like creating a piece of state, I mean, check that out. All I typed in was const and it knows I'm working with React. It knows that pattern of destructuring an array. Not only that, but it knows like input comma set input. Or like if you gave it like, watch this, if I say like um, species comma, it knows you would want to say set species. Uh, so I guess what I'm just trying to say is just because the autocomplete didn't work for this, you know, barks a lot or meows a lot functionality, I want you to know, and I'm not just saying this because it's a sponsored video, 90 to 95% of the time, I have been amazingly pleasantly surprised with the autocomplete of Codium. Um, anyways, let's move on. What I want to show you now is uh, what I think a much better example of using Commander Control I. So we saw how you can give it a command, right? Like I could say in CSS, I could say like, uh, write a cool button rule that has a blue to green uh, gradient background. And you know, that's gonna give you probably what we would expect, right? So there you go, it looks like a button, it's got the blue to green gradient, cool. But a much, what I think is really cool is if you select a certain bit of code, you can then run command mode just on the code that you've selected and you can have it modify it and you could get really creative. Um, like I don't have a scripted example, but um, like if I selected this and said like uh, increase padding by 20%, like let's see what that, yeah, I mean literally it changed it by, I mean it, you could think of a billion different examples, but I think that's really cool. Or like instead of just selecting a little bit, what if I select my entire document and then said like uh, increase border radius by 25%. Okay, and accept it. Uh, really quick, something that's coming to mind is like, um, like let's say you had a ton of HTML. Now, yes, you could do like a global find and replace on class if you wanted to like put it into JSX and change it to class name, uh, but you could very easily just tell Codium to do that, right? Like, um, like imagine if you, uh, back in our fake Re React component, like if you um, pasted in some JSX and then you like selected it, and said, uh, change all instances of class to class name. Um, and there you have it, just go ahead and accept it, cool. So I don't have really the best examples on call right here, but the idea is that you can select certain areas and give commands or give a command even with nothing selected, right? You could say like, uh, give me an array with 12 random names. Cool. So at this point, we've seen different ways that you can interact with Codium. It auto suggests just as you're typing, it can base it off your comments, you can use the commander control I, but I've saved perhaps the most interesting or the most fun or the, the most exciting or the best for last. Um, so check this out. If you go over here and actually open up the Codium extension, yes, it has chat, it has GPT. So let's give ourselves a different goal here. Um, Let's imagine that we had this JSON endpoint, like a different developer on our team said, hey, here's a JSON endpoint with random pets, and each pet has a name, a photo, a species, birth year, description, and you need to write client-side JavaScript to fetch this endpoint and then actually display it, and you know maybe like in a two-column grid, but actually display the name, the photo for each pet, like loop through it and display it. So we're gonna try just writing a chat prompt and having Codium do all of that for us. Um, so really quick though, let's let me sort of like empty out my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I'll keep, you know, just like an empty HTML file. It's completely empty out our CSS and JavaScript files. And uh, yeah, let's try this. So let's think of a good prompt. First of all, let's get that at that JSON address in our clipboard. And let's say this. Let's say uh, write some JavaScript to fetch the data that lives at, and then I'll just say quotes and give it that endpoint and say, uh, and loop through the array of pets and generate uh, HTML with a div, uh, with a class of uh, pet card for each pet. Each pet card should have two columns. The first column should be, should have its 
photograph and the second column should have the pet's uh, name and species uh, and description. Okay, that's it. I mean, I'm just, let's push enter, see what it gives us. Uh, so it gives us a little bit of JavaScript. So I would just go into my JavaScript file, click insert. Hopefully it gives us some CSS too. It did not give us any CSS. So let's see if that worked. It almost worked. I mean, so this is the real data. Meows a lot, barks a lot, hops a lot, rough. I'm not sure why the photos aren't working. So from here you have different options. Um, when I ran this earlier, it worked perfectly. It wrote me CSS with a two column grid. The photos worked on the first try. So I don't know if there's a bit of randomness at play, but I mean, we can try to debug this. I mean, still in one command, we got code that's fetching data. You know, it's using dot then instead of async await, but I mean, what can you do? I'm looking at the JSON. So the photo property is just photo, uh, but back in our code, yeah, it's looking for dot photo URL. So if we just change that to photo, uh, let me zoom out a little bit. So, I mean, it's working. It's fetching the JSON, it's looping through it, it's displaying all of them. Uh, I wanna try a different chat prompt though, because when I tried this earlier, I was much more impressed with the results. So let me do this. Let me start all over and maybe try to give it one more better prompt. Um, cool. Let me actually delete that conversation and start an entirely new chat. Let me try to write a different prompt. Also, I pressed Command Enter, which gave it context based on my project folder. Let me try one without any context. So I'll say like, uh, write JavaScript to fetch the data that lives at, and give it the endpoint, and then say, and loop through the array of pets to uh, generate an HTML div of dot pet card. And uh, also, please write CSS for the dot pet card um, and have it be two columns. The first column should have the pet photo and the second column should have the pet's name and species. Now, I won't press Command Enter for context. I'll just press Enter. And let's see if that gives me CSS as well. Okay, let's see if this is a little bit better this time. Um, so first of all, I would go into my uh, JavaScript file and you can just click insert. Okay, so that's already working better this time. And then let's go insert the CSS. If we go in here, click insert. I mean, there you go. So I think the lesson here is maybe sometimes using the context of your project helps with command enter, but a lot of times you might just wanna ask it a question even without the context of your current folder because that just worked on the very first try. I, mean, I just think this is really cool. But I don't wanna downplay the beauty of using context when you're chatting uh, with Codium. So uh, let me switch over to a different example. Here I have a Laravel project, and if I open up a new chat in Codium, I could say like, uh, in my project, where can I define a new route? I'm not sure what would happen if you did that without context, but like if you press, uh, command enter, it's gonna look at your code base, it's gonna look at your project, and let's see if it can detect that this is Laravel. In your Laravel project, you can define new routes in routes slash web.php. Cool, and then it gives you an example. Long story short, the chat feature of Codium is really cool. I've had much better luck with this than just chat GPT, uh, because it can have context of the project you're in, and I mean, it's just awesome. I'm, I've been really enjoying this the last week. Anyways, that's enough of me stumbling around and rambling. The idea here is that Codium has over a million installs. For an individual, it's completely free and it will be free forever, so why not go try it out? I think it has, what is that, five stars on average? Enough said. So what are you waiting for? Go give it a try. Thanks again to Codium for sponsoring this video, and stay tuned for more web development tutorials.